Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nitai Gor Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nitai Gor Hari Bo Jai Jai Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jai Jai Prabhu Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane, Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine, Nerise Shashanyavadi Paschachadesha. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya so we're, we're hearing the pastimes of Narada Muni as he searches for the person who has received the greatest mercy from the Lord. So Narada Muni had come to Prahlad Maharaj. Lord Shiva had directed him to Prahlad Maharaj. And Narada was telling Prahlad why he thought he was, the, he had received the greatest mercy from the Lord. And remember, Narada Muni is a guru of Prahlad Maharaj. But Narada Muni's glorifying Prahlad, 
that you're the greatest devotee, you've received the greatest mercy from the Lord. So Prahlad is refuting these arguments of Narada Muni. He's explaining to Narada Muni how actually he is not the recipient of the greatest mercy from the Lord. And different reasons are being given. Narada Muni, one of the reasons why he was declaring Prahlad to be such a great devotee is because Prahlad is always remembering the Lord. But Prahlad said, well, he said, when I have problems, when my mind becomes disturbed, then I try to remember the Lord. But it's not that all the time I'm remembering the Lord. So in this way, Prahlad Maharaj is saying that if his mind is disturbed, if your mind is disturbed, you're not going to be able to do things like Nam Smarana or Lila Smarana, these kind of this kind of concentration of the mind on the form of the Lord and the name of the Lord and the pastimes of the Lord, you have to have a very peaceful mind to do that. If your mind is agitated or disturbed by some situation, you won't be able to do that successfully. And the whole concept of remembering the Lord Although it's one of the nine kinds of bhakti, we should understand that it's not easy, it's very difficult. Because the mind, we you know our minds are, they tend to be emotionally disturbed by different situations. So there are better processes than just simply remembering. Smaranam. It's not only difficult, but it's not really practical just because of the nature of our mind. This is discussed actually in the second half of the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita when Gop Kumar is traveling and he goes to Tapaloka. Tapaloka is way, way up there. And above the heavenly planets, you know, above the heavenly planets, you have Mahaloka, Janaloka, then Tapaloka, then Satyaloka. So Tapaloka is where the four Kumaras stay. And the people in Tapaloka, they're all engaged in meditation. They're all doing this absorption of the mind, fixing the mind. So when Gop Kumar goes there, they have a discussion about that, about is this actually the proper way for self-realization? To just sit and concentrate the mind. How long can we do it for? It's a problem. That's a challenge. That the four Kumaras, they didn't grow old. They remained children. Because they thought if they have to grow old, then they'll be agitated, they'll be disturbed. They kept themselves as children. Anyway, that that's, whole thing is discussed there in the second half. Here, Prahlad Maharaj is saying that, you know, I only remember the Lord when my mind becomes disturbed, when I have the agitation in my mind, then I... I, I realize I have to bring my mind to remember the Lord. Otherwise, he said, I'm not so conscious of the Lord. And Prahlad Maharaj was saying that uh, the Lord did so many things for you. He, he came to protect you. So... This, of course, was the, 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 the uh, statement which Lord Krishna had made in the Bhagavad Gita. 
कुंतिया प्रति जाने ही नामे बक्ता प्रनशति that my devotee will never perish. So when Prahlad was in danger, then Lord Nishringadev appeared. Lord Nishringadev came in order to keep the promises which all the different devotees had made. Because Lord Brahma had given benedictions to Haranyakashipu. Benedictions like Haranyakashipu, he got the benediction from Lord Brahma that he could not be killed in the day or in the night, and he could not be killed by any man or any demigod or any animal, and he could not be killed on the land or in the water or in the air. And so many different benedictions were given by Lord Brahma. So Lord Nishingadev had to come and he had to appear, he had to appear in that form as Lord Nishingadev, which was very, very special form. It's not really one of the 84 lakh species of life to have a half a man, half lion body. You know, it's a very special form. This the, the Lord Himself. He assumed that form. And why did he assume that form? Just to keep intact the benedictions which were given. And the Lord likes to see all the different statements made by his devotees to be honored. Just like the four Kumaras, when they went to the spiritual world, they, then they cursed Jai and Vijay, that they would have to fall down to the material and they would take birth as demons. But they also blessed them that they would come back soon. And also they give blessings that, uh, that uh, they would be killed by Lord Nishin, that they would be killed by the Lord. So that that was a, a blessing for them. So then also Haranyakashipu, he also had, he had said some things that they had to be honored. Things like, uh, well, uh, Haranyakashipu asked Prahlad, where is your God? Is he in here? And Prahlad said, yes, he's everywhere. So Lord Nishingadev wants to keep the word of Prahlad, so he appeared from the pillar. And Haranyakashipu, he wants to... Uh, He, he, he actually understood the power of his son because he'd been trying to kill Prahlad in so many different ways, but he saw that Prahlad was, was not dying. Nobody could kill him. And then Haranyakashipu began to think, maybe I, because, because of my son, I will have to die. And, but then maybe it will not happen. But Harani Kashipu could understand that his death was imminent because he'd been trying in so many ways to kill Prahlad without success. So what's going to happen is that he himself is going to die. He's going to be killed. So that certainly had to happen. It was also told by Kashyapa to Aditi that uh, you will have a child who will be a great devotee. That your 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 child, your children, your two children, Haranyakashipu and Haranyakashipu, they may be demons and they will give a lot of trouble, but they will have a child. One of them will give birth, will have a you will, so you will have a grandson, and your grandson will be a great devotee. And your two children, these two, uh, Haranyakashipu, Haranyaksha, they will be killed by the Lord. And so being killed by the Lord, they will be liberated. And, the, and you will have a grandson who is a great devotee. And of course, they, when, uh, when Kayadu, the wife of Haranyakashipu, was arrested by the demigods, 
they had the idea, they thought we will wait till she gives birth and when she delivers a child, we will kill it because they were so sure that if Hiranyakashipu's wife is going to give birth to a child, must be a demon, must, and it will get, demon will give us a lot of trouble. So the demigods thought, let's get the child when it's born, and we'll kill it at birth. But Narada Muni appeared to them and told them that you, won't, you can't do that because this is a very special child, that even if you try to kill the child, it's not going to die because this is a very special child who is protected by the Lord. Prahlad Maharaj tells uh, Narada Muni, he said, you say the Lord is protecting me. He said, but actually it's not the Lord who's protecting me. It's the divine energy of the Lord. It's his internal potency which is protecting me. Mahatmanas, so Mahatmanas to Mamparta Daivim Prakritim Ashrita. The great souls are under the protection of my divine energy. So this divine energy, this Prahlad said, this is what is protecting me. Now that protection is there for everyone. In this way, Prahlad Maharaj is refuting the different arguments which Narada Muni had. He's claiming that Prahlad was such a great devotee. But Prahlad said, no, you know, I'm not a great devotee. I'm just an ordinary devotee. I'm just a demon. I'm a demon. I'm born in the family of demons. And look who my father is. Just look at my family. Look at my father. What kind of person was he that he wanted to kill the Lord? In, in this way, Prahlad Maharaj is So, uh, the Lord gives his mercy. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj said, you said I've got the, the greatest mercy of the Lord, but who does the Lord give his mercy to? And Prahlad Maharaj tells Narada Muni, the Lord actually gives his mercy to those who, who serve him, who do service. That, and that service, that is the real, that is the sign that somebody has really got the mercy of the Lord. When somebody is engaged in service, that is actually the mercy of the Lord. And he said, devotees like Hanuman, they are really, they have really got the mercy of the Lord. So sometimes, of course, we don't appreciate good fortune when we are given the opportunity to do service. So we may say, oh, why you want me to cook? Oh, why you want me to do RTE? Why you want me? You know, sometimes we don't appreciate that this is, this is service. This is mercy. This is the mercy of the Lord that to, to be actually able to engage in service for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. It is the greatest mercy. And we should be eager for that mercy, to take that mercy. And so Prahlad Maharaj says, I, I don't do any service. Of course, Prahlad does do service. His, his service is remembering the Lord. But Prahlad Maharaj says, he's, he's saying, no, actually, no, I'm not a good devotee. And it's the nature of everyone who is a good devotee that they'll say, I'm not a good devotee. One who is actually a devotee will naturally be humble and consider themselves to be unqualified and fallen and unworthy. So this is seen when Narada Muni travels these different places and meets different people, one after another, they will all say, no, no, not me, no, no, you go, you go, and they'll send them to someone else. So we're hearing 
how Narada Muni is going one after another to different people. Another reason why Narada Muni thought Prahlad was a great devotee was because he took the throne after Harani Kashipu had been killed by Lord Nishingadev. The Lord wanted to give him some benediction, but Prahlad didn't want any benediction. He didn't want liberation. It didn't, it, did, it didn't mean anything to Prahlad. Liberation has no value to a devotee like Prahlad Maharaj. Because one who's engaged in devotional service is not thinking about liberation. If we're, if we're engaged in devotional service, we're already liberated. That's already there. It's not anything significant for a devotee. Bhuva Mangal is often quoted that he says, when I'm engaged in devotional service, I see liberation standing with his arms folded, waiting to serve me. So liberation is there anytime a devotee wants it. But a devotee is not anxious for liberation. And we see Lord Chaitanya also in the Shikshastikam prayers, he also expresses that. Na danam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagadisha kamaye mama janmani janmanishvare bhavatad bhaktir ahitaki tvai. O Almighty Lord, I have no desire to accumulate wealth or to have followers or to enjoy the opposite sex. I simply want devotional service, birth after birth. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us to pray for devotional service, birth after birth. Now, the Gyanis and the, the Astanga Yogis they're praying for liberation. They don't want to take birth again. They want liberation. But devotees, Lord Chaitanya is teaching us birth after birth. Just give me devotional service. That is the important thing. So Prahlad Maharaj also, he didn't want liberation. Lord Nishringa, they wanted to offer it. But then find, somebody has to go on the throne because Haranya Kashipu was a king and he'd been killed. He was a king of the demons. So who's going to be the king? So then Prahlad agrees to take the throne, to sit on the throne and to be the king and rule the demons. But Prahlad says, that's not a benediction. That's not a blessing. He said, that's just a lot of trouble. I have, to, I have to be involved with all the mundane affairs, all the rituals, all the content to maintain the, the community, to maintain the kingdom. I have to be concerned with all of this. He said, that's, that's not a benediction, that's a curse. <laughs> yeah. you know, to be a, a manager, in ISKCON, if you have to become a manager in ISKCON, it's like that. You know, it's, you get all the headaches, all the headaches, all the anxiety, just like, you know, as we approach Janmastami. So, so many headaches are there. The different managers have to plan everything, how to arrange everything, how much prasadam to prepare, what prasadam to prepare how to organize the schedule for the program and so on. So, so, much, so many things are there to be, to take a, a managerial position. So Prahlad said, you, you got me to sit on the throne. It's just a curse, it wasn't a benediction. So like this Prahlad Maharaj is uh, refuting Narada Muni's claims I don't know why you talked me into this, put me on the throne. Mm. So 
just because Lord Nisringadeva had been very affectionate to Prahlad Maharaj. Remember, I was describing how Lord Nisringadeva was even licking the body of Prahlad Maharaj and he put his lotus hand on the head of Prahlad Maharaj and filled him with Divya Gyan so that Prahlad, although he's only a child, he could offer prayers to Lord Nisringadeva. But he said, this, the, this affection, he said, that, 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 that's not mercy. That doesn't mean anything. That's not proof that I got the mercy of the Lord. That kind of affection. No. So Lord Nishringadev's pastimes, he had to he had to come to protect the demigods and the devotees, and also he has to deliver the two servants who have come from Vaikuntha. So this is different reasons why Lord Nishringadev had to appear. It wasn't just simply for Prahlad Maharaj, but there were so many other people also who were dependent on the appearance of Lord Nishingadev, that the Lord has to think how to satisfy all the different boons which Lord Brahma had given. And at the same time, he has to deliver Jai and Vijay, who, are, who you know, have taken the form of demons, and he, have, he has to keep intact all the benedictions which Lord Brahma had given, and the four Kumaras also, they've given benedictions also. So he has to keep everything intact, all the different blessings with, or curses which had been made by these different people. You can see very difficult job huh? to, be the, to be the Supreme Lord. You have to think how to satisfy all of these different people. And that was why after, after, Lord Nishringadev had killed Haranyakashipu. Then Lord Nishringadev chastised, chastised Lord Brahma and told him, don't you give any benedictions again? Because uh, you give me so much trouble. So Lord Nishringadev comes. Uh, there's it's not very common that Lord Nishringadev comes, but he comes generally to deliver his two gatekeepers. But we know also he came in Chaitanya Leela, he came to the Chankasi. The Chankasi also got darshan of Lord Nishringadev. When the Chankasi stopped the Sankirtan, broke the Madanga, and threatened all the devotees that he would change everyone into a Muslim. Then at that time, Lord Nishingadev came to Chankazi in the night when the Chankazi was resting. Lord Nishingadev appeared and jumped on his chest and took him by the throat and warned him and said, you ever do like that again to my devotees and I will tear you to shreds. I will rip you apart. And just to show Lord Nish just to show uh, Chankasi that he meant it, Lord Nishingadev, Lord Nishingadev drew his nails across the chest of the Chankasi. And the Chankasi was telling Lord, this to Lord Chaitanya. And he opened his shirt and he showed Lord Chaitanya the nail marks across his chest where Lord Nishingadev had scratched him just to warn him that in future, if you ever dare to threaten my devotees and break my Madanga, then certainly I will not spare you. So, so Lord Nishringadev does come in the Kali Yuga, came there for Chankazi. Lord Nishringadev came here for Prahlad Maharaj. And Lord Nishringadev also resides here in Hari Varsha where Prahlad Maharaj is residing with all the other residents 
of Hari Varsha. And that's described in the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, right? That how Prahlad Maharaj and all the residents of Hari Varsha are praying to Lord Nisringadev to de destroy our demonic-like desires for fruitive activities and to appear in our hearts so that we can become fearless in our struggle for existence in the material world. Uh. Oh, another reason why Lord Nishingadev appears is he wants to show the real glory of devotional service. Because when Lord Nishingadev, after he kills Saranyakashipu, he's very angry. So they bring different people trying to pacify him. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras, and they even bring his wife, the goddess of fortune. But nobody could pacify, nobody could calm down Lord Nishingadev. And finally, it was Prahlad Maharaj who appeared and Lord Brahma pushed him forward and he came in front of Lord Nishingadev and then Lord Nishingadev was pacified. So the point is, it's the process of devotional service, which was actually pleasing to the Lord. Not just simply Prahlad Maharaj, but his devotion it's the devotion which is satisfying to Lord Nishingadev. Nothing else satisfies the Lord. Even though you may offer so many fruits and flowers, that doesn't satisfy the Lord. The Lord can get any number of fruit and flowers. He has countless numbers of goddesses of fortune all serving him in the spiritual world so he's not greedy for our offering of fruit and flowers what he wants is devotion and that is stressed in that famous verse in the bhagavad gita right 926 is it patram toyam he mentions devotion twice and he said Ashnami Prayatam. I eat. The Lord wants to eat our offerings. He can eat. The Lord can eat, but he will only eat when there is devotion. The important ingredient is devotion. Without bhakti, you may have so much ghee, you may have a lot of ghee, you may have a lot of sugar and a lot of uh, so many tasty things. But if there's no bhakti, it is not satisfying to the Lord. And bhakti means we will be very careful also about our own cleanliness and purity. The, and the purport to that verse, Baladeva Vidya Bhusan, in his Bhagavad Gita commentary, he mentions about how it's important that people who cook in the kitchen, they must be very pure. And he mentions also about ladies, how they have their monthly menstruation cycle and said at that time they cannot cook. At that time they shouldn't touch anything in the kitchen. So like that, stressing the importance of cleanliness, purity. So we have to also understand these principles, how to please Krishna. I'm pleasing Krishna. Krishna is pleased by devotion. So we want to cultivate our pure loving devotion and it, it 
requires us to cultivate the brahminical qualities. Samo tamas tapasso jam shantir artavam evacha jnana vijnanam astikyam brahma karma svabhavacham. These qualities of the brahmana are the symbol of the mode of goodness. We want to come to the level of devotional service, we have to come to the level of pure goodness. We have to come up out of the modes of passion and ignorance and come to that position of goodness. So we have to be careful, we have to be uh, pure in our habits, cultivate that cleanliness and truthfulness, particularly important. Cleanliness. Prabhupada was going around Mayapur and uh, he came to the toilet. There was one toilet, it was a circular building at that time. It was early days in Mayapur. There was not so much construction. So devotees had been living where we have shops along the wall. Along the wall, the shops here today, we were all living in these rooms on the wall there. And there was a outhouse with toilets nearby. So Prabhupada was going around the property and he came to the toilet and he opened the door of one of the toilets and you know nobody had nobody had flushed the toilet and it was terrible. And Prabhupada was disgusted. He said he said you are Brahmins you have to clean. You cannot say, I never did it. If a place is dirty, you have to clean it. You cannot say, I never did it. It's not my dirt. You have to clean it. And Prabhupada, he was a chemist, you know, he studied chem, he worked in the chemical industry. He knew chemistry. So he quoted a very basic chemical formula. Probably you all study chemistry, right? You know chemistry? So base plus acid. A base plus acid will give a reaction. You get salt and water. Base means sodium hydroxide plus acid, hydrochloric acid. Do you do this in India? Do you do chemistry in India? Yeah, you know this? You know these things? You know base. A base is alkaline, and so base like sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid, you get sodium chloride plus water. Right? You know, you know the chemical equation, right? And point is put the two together, there'll be a reaction. The same way a Brahmana contacts a dirty place must be a reaction. He must clean it. You cannot leave it dirty. That is Brahman. And that's the principle in our preaching also. When we go out for preaching, we want to clean, to purify the hearts, to tell people about Krishna. So very important for us to show that cleanliness. This is a special feature of ISKCON, you go to other temples, you don't see so much cleanliness. They don't give a, they don't have a high standard of cleanliness. They may be very, very good, very spiritual, very pure, but somehow they don't keep up the standards of cleanliness the same way in which we try to do in ISKCON. One of the devotees, Nara Gopal Prabhu, he was telling me that at one point he was the, the CEO in Mayapur. <laughs> the CEO in Mayapur. <laughs> so uh, one man had been appointed the representative of that region of Nadia, the government. And he came to look around and he, and he came around Mayapur and he went around Mayapur and he, he was amazed. He said, how do you people do it? He said, everywhere else I go, it's just a mess. 
everything is broken and there's garbage everywhere. But I've come here to Mayapur, he said, everything is neat and clean and perfect, organized. He said, how do you do it? So, you know, that, that should be how it, how it is, that we show the highest standard. You go sometimes, you know, the Sri Vaishnava temples or the Madhva temples and so on. You know, they may be Vaishnavas, but they're not always so well maintained. They're not always so, so nice, so clean, you know. So we want to show the highest standard and that will be very pleasing to Prabhupada. So as devotees, we try to keep that purity, cleanliness. Goddess, so the goddess of fortune, she's there, she's the consort of Lord Nasringadev, but she doesn't satisfy Lord Nasringadev. Lord Nasringadev wants devotion. It's pure devotion which is attractive to the Lord. And that was why he was so pleased with Prahlad Maharaj, because Prahlad Maharaj represents that pure devotion. And so I said, offering a lot of nice flowers and fruits, and even Lakshmi, that is not going to win the heart of the Lord. You want to get the Lord, you have to have real devotion, genuine love and devotion. All right, so then, uh, so Prahlad Maharaj said, he said. He's saying to Narada Muni, I understand I have not received even one atom of his mercy. Prahlad addresses Narada like, the, oh, Narada like this to tell him that he certainly underwent fallen conditions of one who be becomes entangled in political responsibilities. So Prahlad said, Lord Nasringadev hardly blessed me with his favor. He gave me my father's kingdom. He punished me severely. <laughs> this is Prahlad arguing to Narada Muni. He said, he didn't give me mercy, he punished me. He put me in charge of this kingdom of my father. To be in charge of a kingdom, especially an opulent kingdom, and Haranyakashipu had a lot of opulence. It was a very opulent kingdom. That is the worst thing. The more opulence, the more dangerous it is for the devotee, because we can become bewildered by opulence. Wealth is very bewildering. Bogaishwarya prasaktanam. Thaya parita chaitasam vaya vasayatmika buti samadona. In the minds of those who are attached to material opulence and sense gratification and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service doesn't take place. And so we have to be very conscious. Uh -huh. We, we, if we're not so wealthy, we're lucky. But to have a lot of wealth, it's a very dangerous thing. Very easy to fall into Maya and to become bewildered by it. And people are so attracted by the glitter, the thought of more wealth. And it it's so contaminating, so bewildering. It can take away all of our Krishna consciousness. So then, uh, we remember the quote by the Lord. He says, 
When I especially favor someone, then I take away all of his wealth. When I especially favor someone, I take away all of his wealth. And in that helpless condition, then they surrender to me. That is the mercy. You want that mercy? Who wants that mercy? <laughs> I take away everything from them. This is wonderful. And this was appreciated also like Sudama Brahman. Sudama Brahman, of course, he was so poor. He had nothing. And he, he went all the way to Dwarka and he met with Lord Krishna. He didn't ask anything. He was completely satisfied just to be with Lord Krishna. He had nothing to ask. But when he went back and he saw how everything had been given by the Lord, how everything had been transformed and his place had become a palace and his wife was rejuvenated and she was dressed in beautiful clothes and jewelry and she had servants. Then Sudama, he has, to, he, he has to accept it, but he accepts it in the mood of renunciation. He does not accept it for sense gratification. He took it all in the mood of renunciation. Because Sud Sudama actually was attached to being poor and to having nothing. And the Lord made it, tested him by giving him all that opulence. But Sudama passed the test. He did not become attached. And very quickly, he went back to God. He gave it all up. And then also Vritasura. Vritasura is another example. The Vritasura was, was Chitraketu, and then he got cursed by Parvati to take this terrible, grotesque form of Vritasura. But Vritasura is not attached. He's not concerned. He's, he's just concerned to get rid of this body, and he's encouraging Indra to kill him. Come on, kill me. You've got that thunderbolt. You've made that weapon. Use it. Kill me. <laughs> Indra doesn't want to do it because he knows this, this man's a devotee. This demon is a devotee. So he cuts off one arm. Then he cuts off another arm. Vridasura has no arm. Both arms have been cut off. Then Vridasura, because he's in the mood of a Kshatriya, and he, he doesn't want to give up. So he takes a, a gigantic form and he swallows Indra. And he swallowed Indra. And Indra, because he's protected by the Narayana Kavacha, so although he's inside the body of Vridasura, nothing happened to him. And he still had his Brajra weapon, and he used his weapon, he used that thunderbolt weapon to cut his way out through the body of Vritasura, and he came out of the body of Vritasura. But Vritasura, he, when he swallowed Indra, he thought, okay, I've won the battle. It's finished now. Indra, I've swallowed Indra. Indra must be dead. And so Vritasura sat down and took Samadhi. He entered Samadhi, into Samadhi. And at that time, Indra, came out from the belly of Vritasura. And then it said he cut off the head of Vritasura, but it took one year to cut off the head of Vritasura. To cut someone's head off is not an easy thing, by the way. <laughs> Just to let you know <laughs> that uh, they, you know, it, it's not a small thing, you know. There's a lot of... Uh, bones and stuff there. It's not so easy thing to cut off someone's head. Not a very cheerful subject. Is it? <laughs> not a pleasant thing to talk about. But uh, anyway, that's what it said. It took one year. So anyway, Vritasura, he went back to God. He got free of all of his karma. By taking that body of the demon, 
he was able to get rid of all of his karma. Okay, so then uh, Prahlad Maharaj says, just see how my worship of the Lord has been eclipsed by my attachment to ruling my kingdom and by my ties to family members, servants, and others. For not crying over this in remorse, I should be condemned again and again. So they, they use the word, Prahlad Maharaj said, my, my devotion for the Lord has been eclipsed. Just like when there's an eclipse, Rahu comes in front of the sun or in front of the moon. So the same way the Prahlad Maharaj uses this term, he said, my devotion for the Lord has been eclipsed. It's been covered over. In other words, it's still there, but it's covering, just like when Rahu comes in front of the sun or the moon, it covers the sun and the moon. But the sun and moon is still there. The same way the devotion is still there in Prahlad, but it became eclipsed by him taking that position of the ruler and sitting on the throne and having to do all the material duties. Huh. So Prahlad Maharaj is regretting all of this, that he had to take this, this kind of responsibility. There's no mercy. It's not mercy. It's punishment. <laughs> so, okay. Any question? Any comment? Maharaj, online, there is one question. Uh, Sankarshan Priya Guru is asking. Who? Hare, Sankarshan Priya Guru is asking. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. I have a question. When Sankirtan movement was disrupted by Chand Kasi, Lord Narsimhadev appeared. Now, there are many Chand Kazis who are disrupting the Sankirtan movement in Bangladesh and killing our devotees. It's very painful to see this. But Narsimhadev does not seem to be punishing them and prevent their atrocities. How to understand this, Maharaj? How to understand it? Well, sometimes it's just a question of time. You just have to wait. And maybe Lord Narsimhadev did come, but they, 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 haven't, they haven't told us yet. We don't know what's going on there. You know, these people... The Chan Kasi, he was reluctant to tell anybody, you know, he, but he took Lord Chaitanya and he said, I just wanted to tell you something in private. The Chan Kasi revealed it to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So you don't know what's happening with these Mohammedans and people who are obstructing the Sankirtan movement. Anyway, we have to. They see, time will tell, in the future you will see. Yeah, the devotees in Bangladesh undergoing some difficulties in their Sankirtan. They've been persecuted. Hare Krishna Maharaj. But the government is very favorable there. The government are trying to support and protect the devotees because they recognize the rights of the other, the minority groups. So we have to be patient. We always pray to the Lord and expect his mercy. Of course, what should a devotee think when we're suffering? We should think that actually I meant to suffer, that but my suffering has been reduced by the grace of the Lord. So we we could say, you know, maybe we need a, a Prahlad Maharaj there. Maybe because none of the devotees in Bangladesh are on the level of Prahlad Maharaj. So maybe that's 
that's why Lord Nishinga didn't come. Or maybe uh, at least that level of devotion which Prahlad Maharaj has. The devotees in Bangladesh have to also come to that level of devotion. Then they can be worthy of the protection of Lord Nishinga. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have a question. Uh, you said the four Kumaras. So we should always think of ourselves unworthy, that because I'm very fallen, because I'm fallen and unqualified, therefore the Lord didn't come to protect me. If I'd have been a better devotee, then the Lord would definitely come to protect me. So you, you need the the benedictions from the De Lord Brahma and the four Kumaras and all of these people. And then, then the Lord comes. But certainly Krishna is aware of all the difficulties which his devotees go through. Just like the Pandavas, you know, they had to go into exile. 12 years, so many years they had to go into difficulty. And so devotees also suffer to show their qualities and highlights their devotion because the devotees in Bangladesh are undergoing so many difficulties. So more and more devotees are appreciating their steadfast devotion and their surrender to Krishna. Okay, any other question, Prabhu? Uh, it was nice to hear about the devotion of Prahlad and the cleanliness part which both you mentioned today. Also, um, personally, I wanted to know that uh, we have heard the thing Falena Parichita. So by the result, we understand devotion sometimes. Uh, so in the, maybe because of the fruitive mentality, which is there, uh, the my focus goes more towards the result rather than the devotion. Uh, so I saw you, uh, I was very inspired. You were distributing pamphlets in the Nagar Kirtan in spite of you are initiating guru and such a big stature as such but what inspires you also like this to be very simple um, because again and again that focus goes on the results rather than the devotion so just wanted to hear from you Maharaj. well focus goes on the results rather than on the devotion how to avoid that <laughs> Simply by simply engaging in devotional service. You just simply do service for Krishna. Don't think about the results. Important thing is service. And just do, just follow. Just follow. Prabhupada said, just as I'm doing, then you also do. And so we just follow. Yeah. Devotees are going on Sankirtan. I should also go on Sankirtan. Devotees are going for preaching work. I should also go for preaching work. Just follow the examples. Just hold on to the, the devotees and they will pull you back to Godhead. Right? Prabhupada said you couldn't go back to Godhead unless you're really pure. So everybody thought, oh, I'll never go back to Godhead, you know. But then Prabhupada said, just hold on to my dhoti and I will pull you back to God. So then everybody felt relief. Just hold on to Prabhupada's dhoti and he'll pull us back to God. No, we don't have any qualifications. So the, the idea is hold on to the devotees, stay with the devotees. If the devotees are all going out for Harinam, we should go out for Harinam. Right? We want to join Harinam. I spent my life on Harina, practically, <laughs> you know, so many countries I've been, so many places, everywhere we do Harina. 
One, one, a few years back, I was on Harinam in Calcutta, one devotee in Calcutta temple said, I'm going for Harinam, do you want to come? So I went with them on Harinam in Calcutta and we were distributing some book and talking to people and that. And then I came, I, I had to leave India. I went to, I was in Thailand and I was in Bangkok and I was on Harinam and I met the same people I met in India. <laughs> I met the same people, and they were. Hey, hey, I saw you in. I saw you in Calcutta. Yeah, and there I was in Bangkok, and it was chanting and distributing. So they were surprised, you know. That. Another time, that that same thing happened to me. I was in England, and I was doing sankirtan. I was in a small town, actually. Prabhupada was there. And we'd gone to a house program. Prabhupada went to visit this man's house, and we all went with Prabhupada. So I was distributing some books somewhere in the street, and I met some people. And then later on, somehow, just a short time later, I was in America, <laughs> and I was distributing books in America in the Port Authority terminal. And this the same person came by and said, Huh? Ah, I saw you in England. <laughs> Yeah. It was just amazed, you know. That he met me in England, I was selling books. He met me in America, New York, I was distributing the same thing. They just surprised, you know. And, you know, this is this is our business, right? We serve Krishna here. Next life you go on and serve Krishna. We were talking about Anadi Jagannath yesterday. They had a big Smriti Sabha. So he did so much service for Krishna in his life, and he gave up his life in the service of Krishna. Certainly he will go on and serve Krishna in the next life. So devotional service is continuous. Never lose the benefit, never stops. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai.